Welcome, everyone. This is Chris again with Virtual Firearms Association, bringing you Digital Defenders Podcast. And we have another special guest here today. We have a familiar guest and another special guest. We have Ken, also known as Crypto Ken, and we got Brandon with Fat Fan. We already remember him from the last podcast, but he brought his brother, Crypto Ken. But without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and let Ken go ahead and introduce himself. Go ahead, Ken. I bet. So my name is uh my name is Kendall, but uh the name Crypto Ken was given to me by my homeboy. Uh, I got a I got a homeboy named Slicky, and uh, <laughs> I invest in crypto. So he he basically said, "Well, yo, you know, you invest in, in in crypto." He was like, "But you hold, you know, Bitcoin." He was like, "Man, your name Bitcoin Ken." So I kind of tweaked it to Crypto Ken. It was kind of catchy, and then uh, my brother and I collaborated. He actually helped me come up with the uh, with the logo with the guns on it, you know, so, so I kind of went with it, went with it from there. But, um, but so yeah, that's how I pretty much got my name a little bit about myself. Um, I'm actually an ice cream. So I work for uh, <laughs> Dryer's Grand Ice Cream. I'm a supervisor over there at the ice cream plant. Um, in, in my spare time, I like to shoot. I like to shoot. Um, actually my brother, again, he, uh, he got me into going to the range a lot. So I never used to go to the range, you know, had a, had a firearm, never used to shoot it, go to the range. And um, he convinced me. He's like, yo, come to the range, yo. I'm telling you, you're going to like it, this, that, and the third. At the time, I was so focused on what I was doing. I'm like, dude, that's your thing. Do your thing, my guy. You know, we'll we catch up. But eventually, I bit the, the forbidden fruit, I guess. <laughs> I started going out to the range with him, and I got hooked. And then one day he just called me out the blue. So, you know, backstory again, uh, we're part of a gun club, Urban Sharpshooters. Uh, he's the president. And how I became the vice president was pretty funny, right? <laughs> he became the president. He said, okay, he's going to do this, this gun club thing. He came to me, he called me, he said, well, look, yo. He said, uh, you're going to be my vice president. I said, I'm just going to be your vice president? Just like that. Like, oh, you my vice president. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I said, <laughs> like, you know what? So it was cool though. It was cool. Look, that's my that's my bro. And I said, I'm loyal to my bro. So I said, all right, it's cool. What you need me to do? So he said, Man, we just gonna wing it. He said, We gonna wing it. You know, we had a, a little plan and, and from there the rest is history. Okay. The rest is history. Okay. We in the range at least once or twice a week. And um just going to the range once or twice a week has really expedited the process in regards to building our skills up. So I see that like we're shooting with people who have been shooting for long periods of time and we're holding our own, you know what I mean? And I haven't really been been shooting that long. Really, uh, I believe July made two years. So, you know, we're, we're making some really good progress. OK, I, I noticed one thing um, also just um, just from following Brandon. And then I've seen you in the videos that y'all have a YouTube <laughs> channel. You want to talk about your YouTube mm -hmm. channel, how long it's just been, it's been in existence and um the direction that you're actually trying to go with the channel. He's a word to answer it because I know it belongs to both of y'all. No, nope. So I'm gonna tell you what, Kendall has been doing a hell of a job with the YouTube. You know, <laughs> we sat down, we brainstorm on it. So actually this YouTube channel is really his baby child and we follow. So you know what? I run the club, he runs the YouTube and it, it just works. So go ahead, Ken. So we started the uh the YouTube channel about uh, a month ago, maybe maybe two months ago. And it was just it was just an idea. We knew we wanted to do it. And it was kind of like a procrastination thing. We go into the range, you know, we're, we're doing all this stuff. We're going to different events. And then it was like, well, yo, we go to the range at least twice a week. Why aren't we using and we were getting content. So that was the other thing. We're getting content. What are we doing with this content? You know, so then we finally just sat down and said, yo, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, and that's what we did. So we 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 post every day. Every day we post uh, reels. Uh, we post an episode once every week. So what I do is uh, we we break it up. I'll edit two videos, three videos, and then Kenny will come back and edit two, three videos. The direction that we're really going to take it to, um, we want to get into podcasts because we really haven't done you know much podcast, but we want to get into podcasts and uh, definitely gun reviews. Mm -hmm. We want to get into range review. Well, we're going to get into range reviews where we go to different ranges and actually give reviews on the ranges. And just content, it's it's really no uh it's no box that we want to really put ourselves in. We want to just have entertaining content and really just organically grow the grow the channel. Yep. Two way, baby. Our way. Oh, yep. That is true. I mean, that is 
pretty much just the wave of of getting just your information out there is social media and uh, YouTube is definitely there you go yep yeah. network to actually oh and sorry 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 for, for, for one second I forgot the name of the channel is be more calculated be more calculated be more calculated all right yep. I'll yep. definitely post that on there to get your name out there just um on this podcast so people can look y'all up and see what be more calculated it's all about so that's that's a good thing um I'm about to say yeah that's all we got to do we got a network I'm about to say I'm pretty sure you gained a ton of followers after um, our, uh, our last interview. I see it oh. actually did. It took off pretty decent. <laughs> yeah, so I'm pretty sure you had to get a couple of uh, subscribers. Yeah, it did. Uh, the video was definitely a, a hit with uh, with you, Brandon. Um, it it was it was good. I, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was explaining that to Kenny as well, or Ken, crypto <laughs> Ken. Ken. <laughs> I was explaining <laughs> it to him as well <laughs> that um yeah that the video was received. Definitely in a positive manner all over uh, Facebook, um, uh, YouTube, and uh, things mm -hmm. like that, even on Instagram as well. Uh, just one of the things I also want y'all just to remember, just especially just starting off with your new channel, and you might already know this, but those of y'all who are listening to the podcast who don't know, um, YouTube is also like the number two search engine in the in the world, next to Google. So, because oh, wow. think about it, once you think about something, so... If you are actually looking up something, right, you go to Google, right? But if you want to see mm -hmm. how to actually do it, the first thing you do is you go on YouTube. And believe me, yep. somebody has a tutorial on YouTube on how to do it. And you'll be surprised. <laughs> yep, you'll be surprised. Like some of the videos that's on there. Like I looked up one day, like how to hang a picture on the wall. This video had like 80 million views. I'm like, really? And how to hang a picture? <laughs> I guess 80 million people like, need it was, like it's nuts in, in 80 million. And I mean, for content creators who, who are actually um, monetizing off of the stuff on, on YouTube, that translates to how, how much money, you know? So, and it was still growing at 80 million, at 80 million views, you know? So just something, you know, let our listeners actually uh, hear and adhere if, you're actually looking to start that channel. It's not easy. It's a lot of work. As you can hear from somebody like us, from me, and also be more calculated, you got posts every day. Simple as that. Yeah. So, guys, now we got the little fluff out of the way. <laughs> you know what we're here to talk about. Yes, sir. We love guns. All right? Yes, sir. <laughs> so, sorry I couldn't make it out that, that weekend, right? I Believe me, I, I'm hey. going to go. Right, we, and, we and I still shoot. owe you one, and I need to we apologize. Shoot. I need to apologize to the people that listen to the podcast because I said I was going to come out there. I didn't, so I'm not going to let Brandon tell on me first. I'm going to tell on myself first before he calls <laughs> me out <laughs> and say that I didn't make you it. You know what? So, Chris, I, I I got I got some house manners. I wasn't going to. Okay, all right, all right. I'm just saying. You know, I'm just at saying. least the third time. You, I get I get to the third time, <laughs> but look, you ain't got to worry about it. We shoot. Absolutely, yeah, we always There's nothing. It ain't nothing to it but to say, "Hey, Ken, Kendall, hey, hey, yeah, we we when we go to the range. Matter of fact, we want to shoot Thursday. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. I don't think I can do Thursday during the during, during the week. Uh, that's that's a little rough. It's okay. Just for I'm my, just letting you know, we, job. Hey, okay. we shoot. It don't matter. You tell you call us and you say, "Hey, Saturday morning or Sunday morning, we it yeah. works. We shoot." Yep. Absolutely. So. I got an interesting question. This is also something that actually came up in uh, the podcast that I have with Brandon, though, Kim. Okay. We were talking about um, 1911s, right? I am a Springfield uh, DS Prodigy guy. I love 1911s. I love the way they shoot. I love the way they yeah. handle. What is your opinion on a 1911 versus a standard, like maybe like a Glock or, or a Strike Fire actual weapon? How do you feel... Well, which one do you actually feel is better? But I'm going to let you go first, Ken, and then I want to hear your opinion on a better firearm or your opinion on which one is actually better after after Ken. All right, Brian? Got you. All right. I tell you what, man. I'm really, uh, in regards to what, in regard to what's better, it's hard to say for me because I have two favorite pistols to shoot, right? Uh, well, three favorite pistols. I have a rival that's ported, 
has a Freedom tr Smith trigger on it. I love shooting that gun. Uh, I also love shooting the TTI, mm -hmm. the TTI uh, Panic. I love shooting that gun. And then I love shooting the Springfield Prodigy. Um, and now I love shooting the Mac 9, right? The Mac 9's ported as well. I believe all of them, all of them are ported. <laughs> hey, right? Chris, I call them Port Winfrey. You get a port. You get a port. You get yeah. a port. <laughs> yeah, everything gets a port. So, yeah. so I enjoy them for different reasons. Like, uh, my rival, I have the Fat Daddy trigger on it, mm -hmm. and I really enjoy that trigger on it. You know, for it to be a striker fire, I really just love the reset. I just love everything about that trigger. Right, nineteen eleven is a heavier pistol, so it's a heavier pistol. Um, it shoots flatter, and now that I have the ports and I got the V eight port in it, it shoots flatter. And I know, um, you know, everybody's everybody's quarrel with the with the Prodigy was they not reliable, and you know, so I too had all those same quarks. Uh, failure to feeds, all kinds of jams. So what I had to do was I ended up replacing all the internals, uh, replaced all the internals, ignition kit, lightened hammer, um, mainspring, 13-pound mainspring, 11-pound recoil spring, replaced everything in it, got a Cerakote job, and it runs now. It's just fun to shoot, right? It really is. I Honestly, I think I have the most fun shooting that particular pistol than the other pistols. But mm -hmm. to say... It's hard for me to say which one is better. It's it's really hard to say which one is better. Which one do I prefer to shoot? And and it just depends on the day. I don't know. Monday I might prefer shooting the Prodigy. Tuesday <laughs> I might prefer shooting the TTI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just enjoy shooting all of them. You know what I mean? Now I will say, uh, I will say, I feel as though the the 2011s or the 1911 DSs, um, they are extremely accurate pistols. Extremely accurate pistols. Um, the trigger, like my trigger is tuned to where as though it has no play, it has no wall, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's a little easier to 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 shoot it, but I enjoy I enjoy them all. So I really can't just pick one. I enjoy them all. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Was Pokemon you gotta catch them all? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> go. What are your thoughts, Brandon? So I, I kind of we kind of went in on it last time. Um, I'm a striker fire guy, and it it just works for me. Um, I do enjoy the 2011 uh, platform, but uh, my thing was, <clears throat> for lack of better words, it was a uh, too uh, deep. I'm sorry, it was too diva esque. For what the hell? I'm sorry. Is that coming up on your screen? No, nah, you're fine. You're fine over here. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Out of uh, my bed. I had a Facebook messenger call coming through. And I got it on Do Not Disturb. Yeah, so um, I'm a striker fire guy. So um, the 2011, uh, the 20, um, yeah, the 2011 platform, the 2019 platform, I mean, 1911 platform is uh, all the, the, the safeties, the trigger safety, the thumb safety, and the grip safety. I just, it's, it's too much for me, for what I like, my style of shooting. I want to get on the trigger and go for it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have any hiccups, um, any, you know, less uh, mechanical features I have to deal with, the less I have to focus on the gun and um, more I got attention on my target and be able to get on target and shoot. So um, I do enjoy the... Uh, the 1911 platform, the 2011 platform. It, it is 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 a hell of a gun. It's a hell of a platform. It's just me personally, I prefer to strike a fire my Glock. So gotcha. Gotcha. So my opinion on it, uh, the, to add my two cents just when it comes to that particular gun. Well, 1911 just in general, I wouldn't just say just the DS prodigy. Um it is you always, you always got to think like if a threat is coming into your house or a threat in general presents itself to you that you want to have or have to do the least amount of actions to actually get on your target and actually eliminate that threat. Now, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. if you practice with it and you know how to do it and it's muscle memory and everything, then, then that's great. But if you're like a right. big shooter and you're somebody who doesn't go to the range as much as um, even one of us that's 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 on this podcast right now like twice a week 
and so forth. I mean, could you just imagine if your heart rate is beating like 150 beats per minute, um, somebody yeah. has like, I don't know, like your child grabbed up or something like that, or he's coming towards you right then and there. You don't want to be fumbling on a, on a safety or trying to remember the the double action and the hammer. You you don't want to you don't want to fumble around with that. That's just one of the one of the cons that I think just when it comes to 1911s in general, and also my experience with my with my prodigy is that um, I also know that's a gun you got a baby, and I think we talked about that a little bit the last time, Brandon. Um, yeah, it's yeah, about yeah. the fact that some of guns you absolutely have to bait or they're not going to cycle right 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 what i mean by that like it got to the point where i had enough residue um the oil pretty much dried up in the inside of the gun and it wasn't cycling the rounds i could probably get two rounds and then it'll jam one round then it'll jam and it would kept doing that over and over and over again and I took the gun apart, which is actually a pain, pain in the butt, actually taking the gun apart. And I mean, it was filthy. That's one of the just nasty <laughs> like type guns that just collects like gun residue and all that other stuff on there. So versus like, I'll say like a Glock, um, a lot uh, the the Glock, like is, which is one of the guns I actually use in a lot of my demos, demonstrations on my channel and so forth, that gun, has been through so much and it has never jammed not one time and that gun just like i think we talked about in the, in the last um podcast that uh i think the gun there was a video that the gun was buried in the mud like overnight or something like that and the guy yeah. cleaned the gun mm -hmm. off and he turned around and fired accurately like the gun was buried mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. mud, a glock mm -hmm. so like that gun is a very very Okay. I always say it's a very, very okay weapon, but it's actually, it's actually more than that. I think it's a, a Glock is a weapon that is, is definitely for somebody who doesn't baby the guns. Let's just say, call it what it is. If you're not somebody who's out there cleaning the gun every two seconds, like you'll have to do with, with the, with the 1911s or 2011s that are out there because they don't have that problem of the double feeds or failure to extract or the guns failure to actually cycle in the round. So that's my, hmm. that's my two cents on just uh, between the two. Now, if you're somebody who does baby your gun and you already mastered the mechanics of the double action and all that other stuff, right. And you already trained for when that threat is coming to you. you. Now, <laughs> That 1911 is one of the smoothest <laughs> shooting guns. It, it's, it's I like have that. a video that I, I put out with me, with me shooting yeah. this gun, and I'm literally putting bullet holes on top of bullet holes, keyhole in my target. Like, it was mm -hmm. deadly accurate. Like, it was scary accurate how mm -hmm. accurate that gun is. Hey, look, I'm going to tell you what. You can't sell me on that thing because that, that <laughs> Glock that I have is keyhole in the same – doing the same thing look i got a video of somebody else shooting it and yeah. it surprised him he, he can hold three shots yeah, and, yeah. And i gotta post a video i'm um, on a uh I, I like when it does that yeah, <laughs> yeah i gotta yeah. post a, a video and the, uh, <laughs> uh -huh. now he, so, does, he got the uh, ramjet he got the ramjet on that glock oh yeah and yeah yeah does, yeah that does i, I do like that go we, we, we definitely need to talk about uh where you got that work done because i want to get some stuff done Get some stuff done to mine. I get it tricked out, man. Because mm -hmm. all my guns are pretty much owned. Well, not all of them, but uh, most of them. Like my my, my DS prodigy is full <laughs> stock. I know. I need to do. You know? Hey, there's a lot of money that comes with sitting up there playing with these toys. So hey, look, we don't <laughs> look, don't don't start. Don't you gotta, start you gotta pay the cost wife, to be the boss. <laughs> if my wife see this episode and I get to talking about how much these things cost. She gonna want another purse, so oh, yeah. he ain't gonna talk about. <laughs> yeah, you right about hey, that. Hey, we were in the car, Kenny and, and myself. We in the car one day, <laughs> and I'm just adding up just op, just just the optics. Ooh, like yo, how many dots do I have, right? And I'm doing the math, and it's like thirty five hundred dollars in dots and red dots, the pistol dots. <laughs> I'm like, man, yeah, you, you bring don't up realize. 
Yeah, you don't even realize how much money you how much money you go through. Yeah, it is because the crazy thing about it is that the, depending on the optic, the optic can cost just as much as the gun or even more, depending on the optic that they're actually getting. Man, look, I, um, I, 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 I almost yesterday with the uh Labor Day sale, almost bought an EOTech um setup with the um the magnifier and the EOTech. I got to the cart and I said, man, I'm not no, no, absolutely not. I, it's a thousand dollars. No. Yeah, no, I'm not. I went ahead and did that. I got talked myself out. I went ahead and did that. I, I, I got that set up on my um on my um Springfield Helion. I got the EOTech yeah, set up. Nah. With the, uh, you know what? Magnify that that Hollison that Hollison was yeah. the five uh five five ten. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. That thing worked just fine. Oh, yeah, six hundred dollars. I I didn't even want to spend six hundred dollars on that. Now, mind you, I got we <laughs> we got two three thousand dollar guns. And here I am complaining about the optics. <laughs> yeah, right. So, questions just when it comes to the optics in general, do you prefer either the red dot or the actual reticle? I'm gonna tell you this: I can shoot iron sight, so all that other stuff is just it's just added on. Plus, mm -hmm. I pride myself on being able to uh, to hit some stuff on iron sight in that distance. So, um, everything else is just a plus. Absolutely. So. so so for me, I keep the reticle on my on my carry. So mm -hmm. I do keep the reticle on my carry. Um, I keep the, the dot on everything else. Mm -hmm. So, so one of the things, um, just for our viewers that's out there, also just speaking of speaking of them, is that you need to train and master your your iron sights because yes. you got to keep in mind that these optics are are man made and they're battery operate, operated. Some of them are solar operated, but they can fail. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't want to be so mm -hmm. dependent on, on a red dot or a reticle that you go to actually use it. And guess what? The battery's dead or it's malfunctioning. So you got to make sure to you have it set up that you're prepared that if it does fail, you can still use your iron sights to eliminate that threat. Mm -hmm. So that's just something that yeah. you may want to pay attention to and uh, keep in mind. Just when it comes to setting up your firearm, so, so that's and for cool. all you old heads that talk about, I ain't using no red dot. You know, <laughs> back in my day, we used iron sights. <laughs> Boom! That's all I got to say. <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't still use the same pager from 1992, do you? You got a cell phone, probably an Android or iPhone. Mm -hmm. So technology has changed and made the craft a little bit better. You don't lose your skill. You just got to learn how to do something new. Yeah, do something new. That's it. Got to evolve, man. Exactly. Right. You know, yeah, the, right. all the older guys, yeah, I don't need no red dot. I don't need no red dot. And then I got one guy, DQ. <laughs> we got him using red dot. Now he don't want to go back to iron sights. Imagine yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, with that, with that being said, the the red dot. Um, when it comes to shooting uh, a red dot versus the iron sights, you'll notice that, at least for me, mm -hmm. it's more accurate than the iron sights. Especially if you have it zeroed in the right way. Not everybody has their stuff is zeroed in the right way, but if it is, it's deadly mm -hmm. accurate. Deadly yeah. accurate, and um, also faster. And you and you're acquisition. Faster. As yeah, well, you're faster. Yeah, who doesn't want to progress in the craft to be? We don't do it to stay, stay the same as day one. Mm -hmm. We progress. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So that's some of the things that you just want to just keep in mind, just when it comes to setting up your gun or optic. Mm -hmm. And I also know somebody, especially just on the price point, like some of the expensive brands are like what Loophole, Trijicon, EOTech. They are yeah. pricey and everything like that. And I knew somebody who had a um, like a little fifty dollar. I don't even know the name of this brand. He had a fifty dollar <laughs> optic. It was cheap. I just know it was it was cheap, and it was fifty bucks. He got it from like <laughs> one of those little Dulles Expos or gun shows or something like that. Okay. So okay. he got it from there, and he threw it on top of his G thirty six, and and that thing was accurate. You know, I mean, I couldn't. I couldn't complain. I'm sitting here shooting with my Trigicon and everything, and he was doing the same exact. He was doing the same exact work as me. So, so look, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a budget guy. Call it yeah. what you want. I don't care. Even if I have the money, which you know, whatever. This, this, this is a hobby. 
you put into it what you want out of it. Um, I have, have budget optics on my, I got a budget optic on my dang on TTI. And mm-hmm. you, I, I shoot the hell out this thing. Yeah. So I don't care. You can call it what you want. You know, I do have some of the, the higher end optics on some of the guns, but it, 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 it works. I'm about to say, I'm not afraid to tell you I have a budget um optic on my gun. Matter of mm-hmm. fact, I have a budget light on my, my guns. I, I like O light. It's yeah. a light. It works. Yeah. I don't understand why the industry is so upset with old light. Exactly. I never understood that either. I never understood that either. Kenny actually put me on with uh Siley. So mm-hmm. I have mm-hmm. I got like uh I got like seven uh Hollisons. <laughs> I normally do the EPS. So I got a, a bunch of EPSs. I got one 507 comp. And then I bought a Siley and I actually put that on my Mac 9. Mm-hmm. And I like the Siley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 cool, man. I think like like you said, a dot is a dot as long as you zero it, mm-hmm. and as long as it's accurate. Yep. And a dot is a dot as long as you're not firing it and it's just losing zero. You know what I mean? But right, a dot is I'm, a dot, man. we're not police officers out here, and then we got to carry these things, and it depends on the life. That's something different. I'm about to yeah. say, if you got a, a firearm that you got to use that the, your life depends on it, then of course put a little money into it. I'm pretty sure your life is worth the two hundred fifty dollars for the optic. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, I wouldn't I would err against the caution of buying a fifty dollar optic for something that you're going to carry. That's mm-hmm. going to be um, potentially uh, protect your life. I get it. Um, you don't really need a flashlight to protect your life. However, the optic, if that's what you're going to carry. Cool. Fine. Mm-hmm. See, I eliminate all that. My optic, my um, my carries, I have two carries, two, pri- um, two primary carries. I got a 19X and a 43X, and they are not milled for um, optics at all. They are just steel um, factory sites. I, I don't have any triggers done to them, anything like that. I keep them factory because I know they're reliable. And if I ever got to use it, I, I can just pretty much bet my life on it that they're going to work. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm that's what I'm going for. But other than that, everything else I'll trick out. I'll have fun with, you know, I, whatever. So, I mean, it's just it's about common sense, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, making best sense of what you got. But you carry... And all that stuff, of course, you you want to have something that's going to protect your life. That that could be life or death, you know. Right. Absolutely. But other than that, right. shit, I'm having fun. Yeah. So yeah. you brought up an interesting point. Um, just when it comes to just a light on your firearm. So I posted a video on a YouTube channel, and it was almost like it was like 50, 50, 50 um, as far as it being received. And what I mean by that is, uh, half the people were against having a light on the gun. And mm-hmm. the other half was saying, yeah, you should go ahead and put a light on your gun. So mm-hmm. what are your thoughts with actually having a light? Oh, well, let me tell you the the rebuttal on why you shouldn't have a light on your gun. It was just saying, oh, <laughs> oh go ahead and paint that bullseye on yourself because now you got a light on your gun kind of deal. So what are your thoughts and opinions as far as just having a light on your firearm? So me personally, I don't see um I don't see anything wrong with it. I have lights on. I actually have lights on everything except for my carry. So I do have lights, and I just got accustomed to shooting my range uh, pistols with lights on them. You know what I mean? Um, I know it does. You know, it will mitigate uh, mit- mitigate a little bit of recoil. You know what I mean with battery and and the added mm-hmm. weight on the end. But um, at the end of the day, I mean, I like me personally aesthetically. I like the way it looks. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, the pistols that we use, uh, you know, when we go, we shoot, you know, competition AGC, um, you know, the light, the light does help a little bit, you know what I mean? With, with, with the recoil, but, um, I really don't have a, a, a big opinion on that. Like, you know, I don't, I don't see how that, I guess I don't understand how that would put a target on you with a light. You know what I mean? Maybe I need more clarity to understand that. So my, my thing about it is kind of piggybacking off what you're saying, mm-hmm. how about I say, each situation is going to be different. I'm about to say, if you're in a situation to where it's better to have a light and not use it versus needing a light and not have it, mm-hmm. it doesn't make it, it is a no brainer. I'm about to say, if you, if you're in a situation to where you got to hide from somebody and your simple self use a light to make yourself a target, then I, I don't know what else to tell you. Mm-hmm. I'm about to say, but if I'm in a situation, it's pitch black. And it's me versus somebody else. And then, you know, I don't use my light because I don't know what's going on. That's situational awareness. That's just kind of a thing to where you got to know what's, what's going on around you. Mm-hmm. I'm about to say, but if the lights go out, the power go out, you got somebody in the house, hell, the, the light could pop. If you got the right light on your gun, 
at least a, a bright enough one on your gun, you can blind the person mm-hmm. and you get the advantage. Yep. Exactly. So I mean, it really, it it. I don't understand how somebody would get to one point from another point. You know, it's just the internet trolls. That's all it is. Yeah. Somebody that will tell you how to shoot and they ain't never picked a gun up in their dang on life. You got to hold it three o'clock to the battery. What? Exactly. Shut up. I guess just to add to add a little bit more context to it, I guess they were trying to say, um, like you would, um, like if you were just to leave the light on while you are, while you're basically trying to draw on that target, and now the target actually knows where you're at. So, and in law enforcement in general, just when why would you do that? But <laughs> and I, I don't know. I guess that's what they were talking about because I was all it was was just like how to basically install the light on it, and it was just click boom. And then the old feed just went out, and they were like, "What? Yeah, go ahead, put that boys up. You might as well go ahead and put a sign and shoot me on your on your shirt while you're at it. Yeah, you might as well go ahead and put a spotlight over top of you to let them know that hey, this is where I'm at. Like the comments were crazy. Like they had a field day going on. But, shoot here, dummy. Yeah, shoot right. here. So, so like in law enforcement, right? When I'm training my officers, um, just at the job. Uh, we never train for you to actually keep the light on. Um, there's so many different ways that you can do it. Like you'll, uh, you can uh, flick the light on and off. Um, there's a strobe feature. There's a feature. It's a reason why it's a quick detach on the on the gun as well, because you can turn around and you can hold it off to the side, which is called the actually the the FBI stance when it comes to you using that light. You can hold it up over here, and while you have your firearm down over here. So you make you basically simulating that hey I'm all the way over here, in actuality you're actually standing right here. So you have the option to actually move that light, which is why they're always quick to attach, mm-hmm. versus them being completely on like how an optic is. You know what I mean? Hey, look, I want to say I want to say thank you. I ain't never think of nothing like that, but yeah. I, I guess that makes sense. No, that's yeah, that's, a, that's an option that you can have, and it's also called um, the wall of light, which is what right. you mentioned as well is that that wall of light, you actually blind a person. Just think about like when when you're in a dark room or you're you're asleep or something and somebody just, or the kids or whatever come in, flick the lights on and you're like like blind. Like it takes a minute for your eyes to actually accustom to get adjusted to, to the darkness. So same exact thing in the dark room. You had a, you had a, a thousand lumen light, boom, you flash it right in the guy's eyes, which is basically, um, it's the rods that's inside the eyes that it takes a minute for you to adjust and they will completely be blinded for that mm-hmm. moment. You know what I mean? And and another thing that I preach is that you got to be tactical enough in your house. Nobody knows your house better than you know your house. So exactly. To be honest with you, exactly. you might not even need a light. You probably know how to maneuver all around there with your, with your eyes yep. closed because you're used to yep. walking through there. You're used to getting up, maybe yep. going to get something to drink. You already know your kids play with their Legos in this area. You already know I need to go around that spot. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you know this. You know what I mean? Yeah, but a burglar doesn't know that. I know for me. Brett doesn't know that. I wake up in the middle of the night. I got to hit the bathroom. I get yeah. all the lights off. I'm navigating through the bathroom. Then I don't want to wake. I don't want to wake myself up all the way. So I'm, my eyes is closed. I know where I'm going. You know what I mean? So I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> Absolutely. So. So that that light is uh, just like you said. It's better to have something and not need it than to need it and not have Absolutely. it. You never know what exactly. the situation exactly. is, and nobody just standing there with a light. Okay, <laughs> you know what I mean. Come get me. I'm, I'm ready to go mm-hmm. pew pew. No, no, mm-hmm. we're not saying that. But that's how they were trying to make it seem. The trolls on the on the video, and I'm like, come on, man. That's not what I'm trying to say. Gotta but, love the trolls, man. Yeah, yeah. Then I just you get to the point where you just let them fight each other. You know, there you go. Yes. Yeah. Just let them fight each other. Step back and watch. <laughs> yeah. 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 So just, you know, just. I just posted a video about somebody fighting for their life on uh on social media. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, you just, um, I, I just, I encourage everybody, especially just when it comes to just uh, the household in general, um, have a plan. If you know somebody's going to come break into your house, or well, not if you know somebody, but just hypothetically, if somebody <laughs> is to break, like, yeah, you know somebody's going to break it in. No, 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 I'm not saying that. But if somebody was, have an action plan as far as what you're going to do. Like, um, not really going to tell my setup that I have in my house, but I have 
<laughs> areas or whatever that I have quick access to what it is I need to do to handle my business, right? Um, and if it comes down to um, to to family, like if you have um, wife, kids, or husband, kid, what whatever the situation, you know, the new world, whatever. But um, if you have a situation where they're like, <laughs> what's the plan with them? You're gonna have them just run to the room and hey, they they are to close the door, get underneath the bed, whatever the situation. You have to play out these scenarios, and that's something that's also awesome that needs to be talked about just in the household because. It's so much more to firearms than you just going to the range, going pew pew. You yeah, have to train for really a real is. life situation. And we know that target is not just like this target that's sport. behind me. They're not going to be standing like that unless you get yeah. a drop on them uh -huh. or something like that. Right. But they're not hey. going to be standing like this behind me. me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if, they, if they're yeah. presenting themselves as a threat to you. So you got to train for all kinds of situations and scenarios that you may you may be presented with so right and it's not corny to train because uh <laughs> i got a funny I, i'll make it real brief and quick um my kids you know they they all uh they understand the position i hold as far as guns and all of that stuff but not even that just the guns in the house so we we had action plans and all that stuff if anybody was ever to come in the house they know what they're supposed to do uh well one night <clears throat> um I'm, everybody's in their place. And then I hear this boom, boom, crash in the uh, kitchen. Wow. So my wife look at me. I look at her like, God damn it. Right? So I'm like, I know all the kids in the bed. Ain't nobody ain't nobody downstairs that ain't supposed to be downstairs, right? So I, you know, I, I get up. I grab the house defense. You know, I do my little thing. Um, I get to the uh, I get to the bottom of the steps. I'm evaluating going on. I'm like, you know, Lord, please don't have, don't please, I don't have to go through nobody in this damn place. Mm -hmm. So I get downstairs, kind of find out one of the kids left the dog out. Um, the dog is a, a little okay, shit okay. so she yeah. uh, she got into the recycle, but we got a recycle bin and it was full of stuff. So of course it's by the door, um, by the window. So somehow, some way, I guess she thought something was in there for her to get. She knocks the whole thing over. So of course it's this mm -hmm. loud elaborate crash like somebody broke into the house exactly so um i'm on my way back up the steps the kids they looking at me they all they all gathered i'm like okay <laughs> they say we did we did we supposed to do but we realized what's not going on when you come back upstairs so we just trying to figure out what happened <laughs> yeah 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 okay. kids are smart man I, they're, sm they, they're I said, smart look, look I said, I thought y'all was asleep. She said, no. But my daughter was like, first one, nope, we heard it. And we all yeah. did what we said we were supposed to do. We we That's laid down, cool. we stayed low until we heard, um, until we thought it was okay. I said, well, all right. So they listened. So it actually is it, it, not corny to practice it. It's not corny to um, kind of mm -hmm. have that, situ that, that into play because it works, especially if you got young kids and they understand if you give them what they need to be serious about it and understand it, 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 it works. So and you know what I never, I guess I I didn't the first time me actually going over an action plan or a plan if something happened I went to the range we got an OG named Dennis shout out to Dennis so we got an OG <laughs> named Dennis and uh, he's with the DMV shooters so I met him at XCal so we at XCal we waiting on Kenny so we in a in the waiting room just talking and he's going over different um he's just going over different scenarios stories whatever. And then he started telling me him and his wife had an action plan if anybody broke into the house. Mm -hmm. So as he's telling me, I'm super intrigued. And I'm listening to him. And I'm like, dang, I need an action plan. You know? mm -hmm. So he's telling me like, yo, my wife already knows she's supposed to get and do yep. this and do this and do that. I said, God, dang it. I said, all right, when I get home, <laughs> and I, said, I, I, said, I said, yo, I was mapping yep. it out of my head as he was talking because exactly. his house set up was similar to mine so i'm mapping it out in my head like okay you know that's not a bad idea i said you know what when i get home i'm gonna talk to my wife he said man do it today so when i get exactly. home <laughs> yep. i did it we talked about it we talked about it a few times so she knows exactly what to do as well so so y'all are right i mean it's it definitely better be prepared if something does happen than not to be prepared if something happens so yeah, yeah. Yeah, also, and it, I, it really it takes the stress out the situation too. The exactly. the nervous stress out of it because the kids they were nervous, but they weren't they they knew what to do. So it was like mm -hmm. a muscle memory thing, and they never had a scare like that before. 
So mm -hmm. for them to actually jump in and do what was instructed to them, you know, just made me happy. Like, okay, I'm glad we did talk about this. I'm glad I actually did, mm -hmm. you know, not think about anybody else. Like, yeah, it's quite corny. You know, everybody's going to know what to do. I'm like, no, let's exactly. talk about it. And let's, let's, let's actually have a, a call to action. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it works. I'll throw, I'll throw a curveball your way. What if there's a fire in the house on the bottom floors and there's there's no way that you can actually get out other than the window? Up there on the second or third floor. Um, maybe so, have emergency ladders, um, the little roll-up ones that you can flip out so you can actually get out of the house. Um, it's it's, yeah. it's so many different things that you get that that people just you just don't think about it until yeah, we we until it's we, too late. We yeah. have, uh, we have fire extinguishers on each floor, and we got yep. the ones that do everything: electrical, mm -hmm. um, chemical, and um, uh, other things. So all three of them. Smart. Um, smart. Smart. Yeah, that's very smart. So uh, I got another question. Uh, so how do y'all feel about kids and firearms? Not not kids as little kid outside playing with a gun, shooting, and all that other stuff. But the question that I'm actually asking is, when do you think is an early age or early enough age for so for training for 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 a kid for a child? My thing about it is, kids are curious from birth. Exactly. As soon as they as soon as they get to start the crawling and walking and all this stuff, they're into everything. So until you're ready to introduce them to firearms, you need to be the person who's responsible to keeping it away from them. Mm -hmm. Because if naturally, if they see it, they're going to be curious about it. And if they're curious about it, that means you're doing something wrong to where you're introducing them to it. So if you're going to introduce them to it, you need to do it right. Mm -hmm. um, I, I personally feel, because I have kids, my, my youngest is seven. Mm -hmm. um, ever since six and five, you know, we introduced him to the concept of what a firearm is. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if that sparked his curiosity in a negative way or in a positive way. I, I just know he runs around here with his Nerf, Nerf guns and he likes to um, set up target um, practice with his Nerf guns because, you know, daddy mm -hmm. likes to shoot at targets and daddy's into the sport and in the hobby of it. Um, but I've let him fire a gun. So it to me, and this was, you know, we, this was a collaborative effort with me and my wife. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it seemed like it took the curiosity out of it far as him going to try to find daddy's gun in the closet and play with it himself to the point to where okay i know what it is i'm excited to when i get when i'm able to shoot with daddy just like all my siblings do mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. i know what to expect versus the kid who's just curious and just just wanting just so eager to get to it and wind up hurting themselves see with my my son and all my kids i introduced them in a safe manner, not to the gun itself and what it does on how to be safe around them and how to operate around them with mm -hmm. them not even holding the gun. Exactly. Yep. Not um yep. actually uh physically even shooting a gun, anything like that. And until I was ready, or until me and my wife were ready to allow them to hold one, possess it, and then shoot it. You know, but the the idea of what it is, what it could do to you, and why you need to be safe around it and why mm -hmm. you don't need to touch it. Or why you don't need to uh to be around it versus just don't say nothing at all. Then they find one day you leave your door unlocked because you had to run down the street real quick to get some uh milk and cookies or whatever, and then you come home to a, a, a catastrophic uh incident. Exactly. Yeah, and just to echo exactly. just, just to echo that, I don't have any children, but I think um I think there is an intelligent way of doing it, and I think what Kenny just outlined is an intelligent way of doing it they don't have to actually hold a firearm for you to actually show them pictures and, and actually show them safe ways of operating the firearm safe, just being safe around the firearm. I've seen like bonehead videos online where guys may take children to the range, mm -hmm. uh, barely yeah. give them safety briefings yeah. and then give them loaded pistols and just <laughs> I saw one, he, he barely as tall as the, as the tray. And it looked like he could have shot in the tray. You know what I mean? Like he could barely read. I'm like, come on, man. You yeah. know, so I just think there's an intelligent way of going about it. I think that's the best way is to actually give them that safety briefing and, and constantly just preach safety, safety, safety before they even able to touch a firearm. Mm -hmm. And then as for the age, 
I think it, you know your child the best. Mm -hmm. Some children mature faster than others. You have some children, they might just, I don't know, they might have ADHD, <laughs> right? You know, you know, like, all right, you know what? That's I true. can't, look, I don't feel comfortable. With, I don't feel comfortable with little Johnny being around firearms. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need to give him an extra two years. But then you yeah. may have another child who is just calm, as cool as the other side of the pillow, ready right? Yeah, mm -hmm. ready to go and just mm -hmm. shows a little bit more maturity. Okay. I trust this one a little bit more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so I just think it's just intelligent ways of doing it and, and you know, safety first at the end of the day. So, yeah, I agree with both of your explanations. I mean, I couldn't have said it just any better. I am like 150% on board with everything that you, that both of y'all said as far as the maturity and of course, speaking with your spouse and so forth, as far as um, a collective effort, just to, you know, like, Hey, you know what? Little Ray Ray or Johnny or whatever is um is ready to actually, you know, learn a little more about the firearms. And but another thing that I just wanted to add to that is that it's almost like you don't have a choice. If you have them in your house, you need to actually have that talk with them. Don't Please. just like you see in the movies where the gun is just thrown up in a closet in a shoebox or something like that. And they're like, I know where daddy leaves his gun. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, come on, that's stupid. Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody should do that. I mean, come on, we're wrapped up in a towel or something like that, and they end up getting themselves hurt. Whether they're and they're always trying to show it to one of their friends, mm -hmm. and yeah, they squeeze the trigger and they end up, you know, shooting shooting somebody. But you know what? It's not even that's not even just kids. We got adults doing the same exact thing with the whole ADHD thing that they they shouldn't even be touching firearms. So I can't even just say I can't even just put it on the kids. You know, um, safety is. Is my number one thing just when it comes before accuracy, when it comes to you just holding a gun in general is can you be safe with a gun? Are you are you trusted enough that you're not going to actually harm yourself or others by you actually being able to hold this firearm, you know, just like with some of the students, just when it comes to me, just teaching in general, just see if you know how to um, cycle the rounds. Like even like I have a uh, little dummy rounds. I don't even know if you can see that because of my light that I got probably not uh, back up a little bit, but these right here, yeah. like little dummy rounds. Yeah. So you can go through the whole functions of, um, of, of, of the rounds being cycled through, through the firearm, just get, get used to it, get used to that slide coming back popping out rounds, even loading them up. Some people can't even load a magazine. You don't even have the finger strength to, to load the magazine. Like, it's so much more to firearms than you just going bang, bang, or pew, pew, you know? Mm -hmm. So just overall, in general, just um, uh, back to the kids and everything, it's definitely a, ma a maturity. Like, I've been to the range one time, and it blew my mind. It was the first time I ever saw it, was that it was probably, I think it was a 10-year-old. He was uh, shooting with his... Um, he was shooting with his dad. I think he was shooting like a little 22. Like it was a little light gun, but um, it still will do damage and it still will kill somebody. So don't, I mean, mm -hmm. people out there, it doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that the bigger the round, the better the gun kind of deal. A gun yeah. can, can kill you no matter what kind of caliber it is. It will call, it will seriously hurt you or a, um, a pellet gun kill, kill you or, it. or blow a limb off. You know what I mean? I mean, it yeah. can do or put a hole through you, you know what I mean? I mean, exactly. all kinds of calibers can do all kinds of different things. So um, you got to educate yourself. And most importantly is that if you have that firearm in your house, it's going to be a time and a point that you're going to actually have to explain um, just how those things work and everything. Just that, um, just that to your minors. And it's, and just like you said, it takes away that curiosity because kids are very curious. You yeah. are so right about that. So yeah. curious about and just how things work because they're like a sponge at that age. Everything is like, oh, what's that? Ooh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I I love that. I love that response. And um, that was actually a real good topic of us talking about. And I hope a lot of people mm -hmm. hear this message because we see things on like Twitter and Facebook and or, or X, not Twitter, but X. And uh, mm -hmm. Facebook and social media or so forth. Uh, hey, all kinds of off accents, man. You know, you, yeah, for the for the week of heart, stay off of X. Yeah, X yeah. off the hook, man. <laughs> stay yeah. off of X. X is a little X. And it's crazy. X rated, yeah, it's I crazy see. to speak what you just said in regard to uh, adults. You're right, man. I literally just saw a video with um, 
a gentleman. I don't even know what possessed this guy to do this. He's holding a firearm. He's messing with the trigger in the house. Mm -hmm. It's one in the chamber, right? And he then turns the gun to like his thigh and just shoots himself. And That's I'm smart. looking at this. <laughs> I'm looking at this and I'm like, I, I just can't even process what I just saw. And I'm just like, what in the world, man? Now he's screaming and yelling. I don't know what intrusive thought that was, but he needs to cut that out because, yeah, I'm I'm like, if you're trying to get likes, this ain't the way to do it, buddy. <laughs> this ain't the way to do it. And it's, it's crazy. Way to do it. It's crazy because <laughs> a lot of these incidents, they have it recorded, like on their phone. And it's just like, you want you want the world to see just how stupid you are or or, or this dumb yeah. act that you're getting ready to perform? I mean, it's it's just it's wild. I just I just I don't I I don't understand it, man. Like, and but that's that's one way that guns also get a bad rap because of that, you know. And like the politicians, yeah, they they eat that stuff up. They're like, oh, that's right. they, they, they eat right up, don't they? Mm -hmm. they get guns off the streets and all this other stuff, you know. It, it it gives us a bad rap, but when you got people like us, we go to the range. We you know we use our toys. We we educate people. We educate. Our, our friends, family, kids, siblings, so forth, whatever the situation is, we store it away in our safe, we put our locks on it, and everything is good to go. They don't ever want to talk about that. They just want to talk about the knuckleheads out there doing what they're not supposed to do, you know? Unfortunately. It is. It's definitely yeah. an unfortunate situation. So I about to say, I got to look at the, the um, st statistic on that. Um, I think more people die from drunk drivers is them actual uh, gunshots. Oh yeah, I believe it. I believe it. Uh, the thing about it that with the gunshots and everything, um, I think it's lumped into like a whole, not just like like police uh, shootings, even if they're like honorable shootings. Not, I'm not talking about that whole. Not trying to get into the debate of police also shooting people that they're not supposed to be shooting, but I think all of that stuff collectively. So you're actually gonna have to dig a little a little deeper and find mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. you know what type of shooting mm -hmm. it actually was versus just mm -hmm. a shooting overall in general so yeah man yeah but I said, you make anything look the way you wanted to look when you when you present it the right way so i yeah, i get it right. we we get it especially in the two-way community we all get it mm -hmm. yeah you're right about that so look i got one last question i asked kenny this in the on uh, the last podcast but i, I gotta ask this question is for you kenny so, like, yeah. out of, like, the four cardinal safety rules, right, and um, and there's a new shooter out there, what is one thing that you would probably try to emphasize just with them that they need to be proficient and be the best at? If you had to, if you had to pick just one thing. If I had to pick one thing that they would be proficient at and the best at, so I'm gonna say uh I'm gonna say grip. Me personally, I'm gonna say grip. Okay. One of my struggles as a as a new shooter is when I'm doing like when I'm doing build drills, right? Mm -hmm. I have to remind like Kenny and I, we just came from uh mainline the other day. And I constantly have to remind myself when I'm coming off off of my holster for that support hand to be firm, right? Sometimes I'll make a mistake, I'll draw, and that support hand is not firm. And you can you can see it dip low and to the left. You know what I mean? So I would say to get your to get your grip uh straight. But you know what? And now that I'm thinking, now that I'm thinking, it's a new it's a new shooter. I would say definitely support hand. Um, I would also say, and I and I've been stubborn you know, as a mule because uh Kenny's been telling me about oh, Yo, you need to drive fire, you need to drive fire <laughs> for the longest. Yep. For the longest, I would not drive fire. I go to the range, <laughs> I get good results, and my thing was, dude, I don't need to drive fire. I don't need to drive fire. I don't need to drive fire. But at the end of the day, you do need to drive fire, right? You do. I'm a, I'm a living testament. I'm doing bills. I'm hitting the target, but they're not all a zone. I started coming in and doing some some uh some dry fire in the house, doing dry fire in the house. I go back to the range, man, we getting twos, we getting 1.95, we getting them all in the A zone. And this was only after doing the dry fire. Mm -hmm. So that those would be the two things. I know you only asked for one. 
No, but no, I would it's definitely fine. It's fine. Go ahead. Go I ahead. would definitely say work on that support, that support hand to have that thing. Because again, if you got that, if you got that pistol vice gripped in that one spot, it's not going anywhere, right? You, it's really not going anywhere. The other thing is, is to drive five. Definitely mm-hmm. drive five. You're gonna get on target a whole lot quicker, and um, it, it just all comes together. So that that those will be my two gems: dry fire and that grip. That main thing, just when it comes to dry fire in general, um, it helps eliminate that anticipation. So those shots won't be going to that load to the left kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Um, you're getting used to that trigger pound, getting getting used to that trigger pull. I mean, um, as far as uh, keeping that gun still without actually anticipating the gun. And because the farther you are from the target, obviously you start to notice how big of the mistakes you may be having up close. Everybody's a sharpshooter when they're shooting three feet away kind of deal. But can you make that shot 10, 15 yards or 10, 15 meters away, or even, you never know, you might have to take a 25 yard shot. Um, There's been people out there, I think it was a cop situation. I think I learned about this in the academy. he had to take a shot, a 50 yard shot with his pistol. And um, and he was able to put it, put both shots, uh, center mass with a pistol, you know what I mean? From 50 yards, that's actually pretty, pretty far, you know. I remember mm-hmm. when I went out with um I went out with Trigicon, we had to shoot from a hundred yards on a silhouette, right? It was crazy because um we were shooting uh, steel targets. And um, we would shoot, you'll shoot, and like you like literally like leaning forward to try to hear the little ding at the end. So you'll shoot, and then it goes, it'll go bang. Ding. I'm like, hey, really? <laughs> it was taking that long to hear the sound come through. But hey, hey Chris, I'm trying, I'm trying to shoot at a hundred yards with my pistol. Put me on. <laughs> yeah. Take me to a range. You try to go to the gun tree, they won't let you shoot that hundred yard uh. I know, I know, I know. I'm not a fan of gun tree. I've talked to you about that offline. <laughs> I'm not a fan of gun tree at all. I would never support oh. that business ever. So Uh-oh. talk about that <laughs> offline. Yeah, I had an experience uh, with it. So um they less. <laughs> yeah, but we'll 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 talk about that. But that was um it was a special range uh, from uh, from Trigicon. They invited us out to to go to the um to go to their range and they had a three hundred I'm just saying, if you still got that contact, you know, let them know that you got a crypto <laughs> Kenny backpack Kenny that would like to come shoot there. I mean, okay, you know, okay. If, if, hey, if I can, if I can make it happen, yo, we can. Um, <laughs> to me, does it make a difference if you're shooting with a pistol? Um, I mean, yeah, it's a different caliber and everything, but if you're in a controlled mm-hmm. environment in a controlled range and you're not out there horse playing, does it right. make a difference whether you're shooting with a, a five, five, six or nine mil? To me, it doesn't make a difference, you know? It doesn't. It's it's the range to be shot, so. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, rules are rules, though, but whatever. It's your house. Anyway, not a fan of them. So, uh, (laughs) anyways, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this podcast. Ken, thank you. Brandon, hey, you're always welcomed on here again. Both of y'all. Excellent conversation. Excellent topics as far as what we were talking about. Um, till next time, guys, tune in. Um, this video will probably go live probably next Wednesday. Um, anything else that y'all want to add before we go ahead and wrap this up? Stay responsible, stay safe. Absolutely, absolutely. Definitely. Stay responsible, yeah, stay safe. Think, Couldn't say any better myself. All right. All right, all right. Thank you again. Thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in to Digital Defenders Podcast, brought to you by Virtual Firearms Association. Until next time, we're out. Peace. Peace.